everybody that's uh, catching up with us here. Uh, amendment uh, A2 was an amendment to remove the section uh, that gave the powers to the Chief Electoral Officer uh, to insert fictitious names into the um, uh, voters list that were supplied out to candidates. And uh, the issue that I had raised around that was that um, uh, it made it very hard for um, uh, small and volunteer-based um, uh, campaigns that uh, really um, made a concerted uh, effort to locate uh, people that were on, um, on voters' lists. And, and in constituencies like mine where people frequently move within the constituency, so we would continue to pursue trying to find someone and, uh, and unfortunately could likely spend quite a bit of time volunteer time in a 28-day campaign, so you, don't exa you can't exactly be leisurely about this stuff, uh, trying to pursue someone that would turn out to be non-existent. Uh, so I had felt that it was a, a particular, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for, hardship uh, placed on small um, uh, campaigns. Uh, the um, member, the uh, sponsoring member, the um, mm -hmm, Minister of Justice, uh, was kind enough to come in and speak to it, in which uh, she had pointed out that, he, um, uh, that this was a fairly common practice, uh, that it was being inserted particularly uh, to try and deal with um, electronic uh, distribution of voters' lists. Uh, as a way of being able to trace back on that electronic um, fingerprint or footprint, if you want to put it that way. Um, it still doesn't help me, um, and I still think there's got to be a better way of injecting that electronic fingerprint into uh, uh, um, the distribution of these lists uh, over the Internet or by, um, you know, recording the list onto um, uh, some other kind of electronic um, distribution method like the um, little key fobs and things like that. Um, so I, uh, I still think that something needs to be done to fix this problem. Um, so I continue to support uh, the um, uh, amendment that is on the floor, although I appreciate uh, the minister coming in uh, to put her clarifications um, on, the, uh, on the table. I think this is a very, very imperfect um, way of, uh, of doing things. And we seem to be caught right now in between uh, that kind of electronic world, internet world, and the plain old volunteer-based foot traffic hard copy version of things in our election campaigns. Um, and I'm just seeing that turn up everywhere. I, as I explained to somebody the other day, you know, when I first started, I used to produce one paper version of my annual report, which was then sent out in the mail. Um, Thirteen years later, I'm now producing one hard copy uh, version, which is still sent out in the mail, but I also have a website, uh, which has to be updated once or twice a week. Uh, with new information, which is why I talk so much in this house. Um, I also am now doing an e-zine, which goes out about once a month, or a really, unless there's a really big issue, and then it goes out more often. Uh, I'm also doing Facebook postings um, and, uh, um, and uh, well, Twitter for those that get involved with that. So what was a way of sending out information in one paper version is now um, extrapolated itself, and none of, nothing ever gets dropped. It's not so we can stop doing the paper version. So everything just gets added on to, and I, um, th those two worlds don't seem to be reconcilable at this point. Um, and because we cannot drop the paper version of it, um, I and, and the volunteer-based approach to campaigning, I, I'm, I'm continuing to lean on the, uh, on the government to find some other way to do this than inserting fictional names into, uh, into our voters' database. Um, there are some other issues that I would uh, like to talk about, but um, they're not specific to this amendment, so um, I will resume my seat and turn this over to one of my colleagues.